house. Come yeah. on in here, sir. How are yeah. you? Hi. Good. How are you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. And we're yes. so happy that you're here tonight. Thank you for inviting me back on your show, Dr. Naita. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the topic tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we are glad you are here. So you're doing well yeah. these days. You're not fighting. These days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not fighting laryngitis, uh, fighting another fight, though. But we're still fighting the good fight of faith. We are going forward. So we're, we're still standing. But thank you for asking me. No, all is well. How about yourself? It's size. Yeah, aside from the laryngitis, all is well. There's yeah. so many yes. awesome things on the horizon. And just like yes. anything else, every time something good is about to happen, there are attacks. The enemy yes. is not happy, you know. Yes. So some, um, the powers that be, you know, aren't happy, but that's not going to stop me. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep Amen. pushing. And Amen. we're just going to keep forward. So yes. we're going to yes. to our topic tonight. And, yes. um, you know, Javardo, we're living in such tormentuous, tormentuous times right now. Yes. And people are hurting. Yes. People yes. are grieving. People are suffering. They're, um, they are suffering from, you know, significant loss. It yes. could be financial loss, loss of loved ones, loss of life, loss of health, loss right. of personal property, right. loss just so much loss and people are hurting and they are suffering. So yes. tonight we want to talk about grief, but we want to talk about grief as it relates to adverse childhood experiences. Yes. So yes. for our new viewers who have not been <laughs> following us, can you yes. give us a quick synopsis of what adverse childhood experiences are? Now I might jump in and out for the mute, because I'm getting ready to have a cough attack. So keep talking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, adverse childhood experiences, it was a study done over 14 years ago by Kaiser Permanente and the Center for Disease Control, uh, commonly known as the CDC. They did a, one of the largest study at that time with about 17,000 plus participants. And the purpose of the study was to see how stressful and traumatic childhood experiences influence later physical and emotional health. Now, this was a monumental uh, study. It, this particular study has impacted so many organizations and agencies around the country, but as well as around the world. So the study observed 10 types of adverse childhood experiences, emotional, physical, sexual abuse, emotional neglect, physical neglect, domestic violence against a mother or any person, mental illness uh, of a family member, substance abuse actually in the home and parental separation, divorce, imprisonment of a family member. So it included those uh, 10 things and it's based on a 10 questionnaire, a uh, ACE questionnaire where you answer those questions and you come up with your A score based on what I have shared with you thus far. Okay, very good, very good. So um, people who suffered through any of those traumatic what? experiences that you shared, yes. what type of impact can that have on their development and on their life long term? Uh, Dr. <coughs> Naida, it, oh my goodness, it literally changes the trajectory of a person's life. Uh, it changes their DNA. The ACE study revealed a powerful uh, relationship between our emotional experience as children and our physical and mental health as adults. Wow. Now, some of the things that impacts is it literally restructures your DNA. It changes wow. your brain. It, it impacts uh, chronic health conditions. Uh, risky behaviors are a part of that person's life on a regular basis they are experiencing a lot of negative outcomes later in life, such as suicide, depression, obesity, uh, heart disease, substance abuse. And they have concluded that that's many more. I don't have time to name them all, but the bottom line is their life is shortened by 20 years because 
what you're not aware of, you're not able to deal with. What you don't confront, you cannot conquer. There's so many people that are walking around with a lot of uh, childhood trauma that they don't know how to deal with or even who to go to to get the help that they so desperately need. So it has impacted uh, uh, lives for, forever, even educational and occupational achievement. That's part of an ACE uh, experience. Wow, that is a lot and that is a yes. lot to unpack. And yes. now we're going to talk about the impact of ACEs and grieving. Now let's yes. talk about grieving for just a second. Oh, sure. Grieving sure. is normal, isn't yes. it? It's yes. a part of life, right? Yes, yes, yes it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, you know, we'll say, what is grief? Grief is a strong uh, emotion. It could be a pain. It could be something that's overwhelming that has happened, sorrow, uh, unhappiness. You know, as we've you said earlier, the loss of a loved one, it could be a divorce, uh, separation from a family member or losing something that is important in your life, a person or something. And it can cause you to go down a, a trail that is tough to recover from. So uh, that's tough. It could be a mother or father figure or biologically parent. Either way, a person can get numb. So when you're numb, you just not only cannot feel anything, you just don't know what is going on. Uh, you be you could get saddened. I mean, very saddened. Um, so a lot of these things happen because uh, a person is dealing with grief. And the answer to your question, uh, Naita, yes, <laughs> grief is normal. You are not abnormal when you're going through a period of grieving the, the losing of a family member, the losing of a career or a job or something that is so vital to your personal life. And that's important to know. Um, it's really a natural reaction to a loss. Right. And in it could whatever be like fashion. Mm -hmm. Right. You said it could be a loss of anything. I remember yeah. when my daughter um, found out she could no longer do gymnastics. Wow. And she had done gymnastics for five years. Right. Four days a week, every yes. day, four hours a day. Wow. It was a part of her young life. I'm talking about from fifth yeah. grade, fourth yeah. grade, fifth grade, yeah. sixth grade. You know, it was a part of her life. Yes. So it kind of threw her into this sadness and I couldn't understand what was going on. Right. And, um, you know, I took her to a counselor and it was like she's grieving. She's grieving, you know, and grieving, grieving has stages. It yes. has phases. Yes. There's, I think the very first one is that initial shock yep. that you, oh my God, I just lost this, whatever yes. it is, yes. a loved one, a job, yes. um, a hobby, a yes. talent, you know. Yes. Um, there's shock. There's um, what's the next one? I know there's um, bargaining and there's yeah, bargaining. Uh, denial. We'll come at we'll, denial is the first step, and under denial is shock, okay. uh, avoidance, confusion, uh, uh, all of those things, elation, and like what you said, fear and shock. Mm -hmm. So that is the first step of the uh, stages of grief. The second one is anger. So yeah. when you go from there, and you you're just angry. You know, you're frustrated, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you know, anxiety comes in, you're just irritated for mm -hmm. just what happened to you. Like you say, um, I've had people in my life and they have grieved over things and you just, you know, and I talk about how to help people, a person that's going through grief, but bargaining is the other one, which mm -hmm. is the third stage of grief. So mm -hmm. that deals with struggling to find meaning, mm -hmm. uh, reaching out to others, uh, Matter of fact, you may get to the point so you just tell somebody your story as you get through the denial and and the anger. Now you're in that stage of bargaining. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the next one is almost like the dark before the light is depression. Mm -hmm. The fourth yeah. one is depression. You know, some as you know, people are depressed already by just life and so many issues in our society, so many social issues and physical things that we're seeing and, and experiencing personally or in a uh, family setting. So people are depressed. They're overwhelmed. They are overwhelmed. feeling helpless. Overwhelmed. Yes. 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 Overwhelmed. And then what happens? Hostility under that depression. So 
uh, then guess what? People want to say something. They want to complain. They may want to fight. They may want to do something because they just feel hopeless, mm -hmm. hopeless. And uh, so that's important, that uh, grief cycle, those stages, I guess, stages right. of grief. Really, it's important to go through that, to mm -hmm. go through that process. Some people will try to rush through it or mm -hmm. they will deny it. They will mm -hmm. not deal with it and they just get completely depressed. You know what? But here's one. <laughs> and I know I'm going to step on some sacred cows. OK, do that. But um, there's a lot of people who think they just going to pray to anger away. <laughs> They're gonna, I'm going to pray grief away. No, it's got to go through the process. Yeah. It's, gotta, it's a process. You got to go through it. Yes. Well, you know, part of, <laughs> even part of this A study, uh, Dr. Uh, Filetti, he was one of the chief investigators of uh, the Zay study uh, that they did over 17,000 people. And what he said was, some people just don't get over some things, even 50 years later. Wow. So the process is important, though. Mm -hmm. The process, the steps that you have to go through. And I, I'm a man of faith. Mm -hmm. I know you're a woman of faith, yes, <laughs> but I do believe what you just said is not uh, accurate. When people say, get, get over it, mm -hmm. pray through it. Yeah, well, yeah, God yeah. is going to happen. It'll go away. No, I've learned that time doesn't heal all wounds. Okay. <laughs> it just doesn't. Mm -hmm. So you're right. No, we just can't pray through it. We got to go through the process. And that's, I think that's God's plan. You know, right. uh, I know it is. So I agree what you just right. said. And, and, and please, please don't, I don't want anyone to think that we're saying don't pray. Really? No, <laughs> so that's saying, not, yeah. We're not <laughs> saying don't pray. We're just saying that praying by itself is not enough. Yes. You have yes. to go through the healing process. Yes. It doesn't just go away magically. Right. Okay, right. well, I think we set the foundation. So let's yes. jump in now. So All right. I've read about something called disenfranchised grief. Okay. And after you explain it, I think I experienced that. Really? Yes. How is that? So, How well, is that, I, I want you to explain it to make sure <laughs> before if I share my story and then I'm wrong. <laughs> So well, please, what is disenfranchised grief? Like what, what in the world? Well, it's basically often a result of not feeling capable of handling an emotional burden. OK. And sometimes we feel incapable of handling what has happened, the inability to handle the burden that came from many things and whatever caused it. So, yes, someone can suppress that experience. Uh, they can kind of hide it, but it's always going to come out eventually. And the point is, we're incapable. We have that feeling. So it's almost like being sunburned from the inside. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Being yes. sunburned yes. from the inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We know that outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but it is. It's like being sunburned from the inside. Uh, extremely sensitive because of the overexposure of trauma, the overexposure of that experience. And it is a result of adverse childhood experiences uh, that people have that they are not aware of. So it's like a sunburn from the inside. Wow. That was deep. That was, was it. Okay. Yeah, that was good. I had, yeah. to, I had, I wasn't gonna put up any notes because I'm trying to focus on trying to keep my yes. voice, but I had to put that up. Yes. So, yes. Um, so. Last mm -hmm. week, I experienced okay. a situation where I was watching. I hadn't been watching any of the um, what is it, the Chauvin, you know, trial. Yes. And I didn't, I didn't watch any of that. Right. Um. But when they made the announcement that they were going to read the verdict at 430, I said, mm -hmm. OK, I will, you know, time, tune in for that. So I was getting a few text messages from people and they were saying, you know, how stressful this was. And they were waiting right. on the verdict and da, 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 da. Right. 
And they said it felt like Rodney King, you know, back when waiting on that verdict for right. those police officers. Right. So I, um, and then someone said, well, where were you during that time? Mm. So I started, you know, sharing my story right. because I was living in Los Angeles at that time. I was going through a very traumatic experience with my mom. Mm -hmm. She had just been diagnosed with, of all things, it was in the 90s. So she right. had just right. been diagnosed right. with AIDS. Wow. And wow. at that time, it was still the gay man's disease. Right. So we were struggling to find the resources and the help. And we were just going through it. And I had taken the day off from work to just escape. Yes. You know, yes. just escape. And I didn't tell her yes. I wasn't going to work. I just right. drove right. and I went out into the valley somewhere. And um, while I was there, I was, you know, just enjoying my day. Right. And then this lady was staring at me and long right. story short, I found out that they were rioting in LA and I was like, oh. you got to be kidding me. Right. That. They did that in the sixties. That didn't work. You know, that's right. <laughs> so um, I was like, well, let me get home to my mama, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. And as I started driving closer and closer to LA, you mm -hmm. can see the smoke and the fires. Wow. I got mm -hmm. off on Crenshaw Boulevard and mm -hmm. Jabardo, you know, man of faith. I thought I had missed the rapture. Oh my goodness. Because wow. it, was, it was, it was fires, cars uh -huh. on both sides of the street, couches, TVs, lamps uh -huh. running down the street. Right. It was total chaos, total mayhem. I thought I missed the rapture. I started crying. <laughs> and it was just such uh -huh. a horrific experience just trying to get home. Right. Because people driving on all sides of the streets. Right. There were no lights. There was nothing. Right. It was total mayhem. Wow. It wow. was the most horrifying day of my life. Huh. And then just to go home and for us to sit for five, right. six days through that riot during right. such a tremen tormentous time for us, right. it was just horrifying. Right. But at that time, I didn't have time to feel. I had to live. Right. And it all came back to me. Right. Last week when we were watching that, you know, the verdict, waiting okay. on that verdict, and I just spiraled. I went downhill. I, wow. just, I just, I had an anxiety attack the whole nine yards. And that's when I was started doing more research on, you know, disenfranchised grief. Right. How if you don't get a chance to deal with it because yes. you're so busy surviving. Right. You suppress right. it and it will come out. Yes. It's yes. going to come out at some point. Right. Right. <laughs> right. No, so true. So true. Uh, because when you when a person is in a state of being disenfranchised and suppressed or, or they kind of hide uh, those things. And uh, what happens is a person gets to the point where it has and they have an inability uh, to make sense out of what happened. Oh, what's happening? Like you say, you was you didn't watch the uh, Chauvet trial. Uh, I didn't watch much as well as well. Um, but people have a tendency to be triggered by what's happening today based on what happened even in the 90s, right? You know, or even earlier. So that's part of being disenfranchised, and people at times just shut down or they go a different way because right. they feel like they had. How can I make sense out of all of this again? Right. Again, right. so that's important. Right. That's important. Right. And then even make sense of it when you're going through it, because right. especially when you're a young person and you're going through that trauma, that you know the the adverse childhood yes. experiences. Yes. You compartmentalize it. Yes. Put right. it away. Right. So that you can just function and go to right. school and, and and live, but it comes out, and yes. that's what. Ever childhood experience is about it yes. comes <laughs> it comes out and it comes out at at times expected or not expected most of the time you don't expect it sometimes it's like you say if people shut down people uh just don't want to do life anymore i mean it depends on and you know what naida what about who you are around when it comes out uh you know how will they look at you or think about you i mean it's just could be something they have never seen you go through uh, whoever it is. So uh, sometimes they may label you as crazy or cuckoo or you lost it or you're all right because 
it's how you express what comes out and they probably have never seen it, it could be a spouse right. it could be a, a friend it could be somebody and they could have known you all of these years and all of a sudden boom uh this happens but that's part <laughs> of uh being disenfranchised yes it wow. is um uh, so uh but there's help and there's hope for it for sure uh, and, and a lot of times when a person is in that state that's something you don't learn in school i don't think you know something you just kind of learn as you go along uh, i don't think they teach that they need to but but, but so it's just a matter of developing the skills right needed to be able to combat that thing when it happens or helping someone else when they're going through it if it's a friend sees you go through it or whoever they may be right there to help you uh to go through it so we'll talk about that uh shortly as well how can we be a part of that uh process of empathizing with someone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I understand you have about four points that you want to share with us. I do. You do. And I do. I have um, <laughs> actually one of the points as it relates to disenfranchise is being sunburned from the inside out. That was really my first point. OK, that was for looking to me. Yeah. Put it yeah, in my put that one. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Um, okay. That was the first point. And then we're going to talk about the second point um, is the inability to make sense okay. of the tragedy, you know, at that moment. Okay. Um, the third point uh, is uh, some people have a history of being minimized and not validated. Wow. And when these things happen, that's how they feel because they have a history of being minimized and not validated. I think we mentioned something earlier. Uh, people have been told, get over it. Mm -hmm. You're not yes. hurt that badly. It wasn't that bad. <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. You know, as a Christian, you got to forgive and forget. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, You know, but not so, you know, uh, it's so it's important that people must understand that this thing is real. Grief is real. Uh, being disenfranchised is real. And the fourth thing is this, um, not having the skills. I think I've said that. So uh, to be able to handle the trauma that often causes us to insulate the memory, which could result in the inability to remember large portions of childhood. Wow. That is so important uh, to know. So those are the four things I want to talk about or oh, I've talked about as it relates to uh, being disenfranchised. All right. Well, let's get started. So you already hit the first one. Did, were, yes. did, did you have any extra notes you, we needed to add? Oh, for sure. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, I hit the first one, the second one, inability oh. to make sense, the third one, because I mean, that's when the aces come in, being people being minimized and all of that, but also not having the skills. But remember now, there are people that are scab pickers. Oh Lord, not the scab pickers. <laughs> You're coming up with all those terms. There <laughs> are people oh, Lord. in our society. Yes, the scab, scab pickers. pickers. Good Lord. Come oh, on, man. Uh, okay, scab help. pickers. <laughs> You don't know no scab pickers, do you? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me about them. I'm, just scab... right. I'm not one. <laughs> Amen. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but scab pickers wants to agitate you to uh, yeah. into picking your scars and preventing your wounds from healing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they live to see your pain Ooh. and your emotional trauma. Oh, Those no. are scab. They there are people on planet earth that live to see someone else's pain and their emotional trauma. They feed on uh, a person's uh, excitability and what to keep you feeling vulnerable. You know, 
so they feed on it. They find ways to keep that person vulnerable based on how they're expressing what's going on. So those scab pickers, Naita, they can increase anger in a person. They can encourage helplessness. Okay. They can encourage anxiety. Now, these are people <coughs> that come to others and they become scab pickers. <coughs> we got to sway away and get away from scab pickers. Good Lord. They're real. Scab it's in our society. Yes. So oh my God. picking scabs in general can risk infection. Right. And makes the scars larger. See, that's yeah. the result. Yeah. You know, so when a person is dealing with uh, grief and they're grieving and they're being, you know, the state of dis disenfranchised or they have hidden uh, suppressed emotions, but more so scab pickers. They are around and they're real. So scab pickers generally, though, it sounds like they're people who have their own hurts and pains themselves and they don't want to see someone else get healed. Yes. Haters in some sense. They're haters. They're herders. Uh, yeah. They have not confronted their own Ooh. issue. I was going yeah. to say something else. They have not confronted their own issue. <laughs> uh, really, I said, Lord, do you want me to say that? No, I guess <laughs> not. But they have not. So, uh, you know, and Naida, it's they're everywhere <laughs> like roaches. I am saying did I say that? I didn't say that. Did I? <laughs> they're crawling, they're in dark spaces. Oh they, they, they don't love the light, they love to be in the dark. But what? they they're just out there. You're right. They have not dealt with it. I mm -hmm. mean, they're on TV, they're on the radio. Sometimes they're at work, sometimes they in the store, sometimes <laughs> they just come up out of nowhere. Where did you come from? Wow. I'm trying to get over this, but you're trying to make it worse. Yeah, you're they trying are, to bring it back. They're trying yeah. to make the scab worse. Mm -hmm. Have you ever picked a scab? I've picked a couple yeah, as scabs. A child, I as a, yeah, there you go. As a child. 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 But yes. as we mature, we learn better. Right. But some people have aged, but they have not learned better. Oh, oh stop it. Oh, Come you on, man. <laughs> Come on. Talk to me. <laughs> some people have aged. Oh yeah. But they're still acting like a child. And wow. they're in every part of our society. So they are scab pickers. Scab pickers. Wow. I still yes. can't get to that. Okay. Very okay. good. <laughs> I, I got a couple more. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you think about that, Naida? Oh, I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. They are yes. the, um, you said they're like roaches. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, but, you know, all jokes aside, there yes. are people that are out there that are hurting. And, ref and because they're hurting, they don't want anyone else to heal. Yes. So the two of you could have gone through something at the same time or similar. Right. And one person is making advancing advances and succeeding and the other person isn't. So they're constantly in your ear. Oh, well, you remember when he said this and you remember when she did that. Right. You know, so um, they're just they have their, you know, what do I um, mm -hmm. um, in insecure people? Yes. Are people who don't like themselves. Right. And yeah. um, and this is an example. Scab pickers <laughs> are an example <laughs> of people who have their own insecurities, yeah. don't like themselves, their situations. So they want to make sure that people around them don't advance either. Right. So. And they try to, like you said, they're pushing off their emotional baggage on someone else. So right. they're making other people feel insecure. Right. They're they're projecting fear and doubt. They're projecting what they have not dealt with yourself uh, themselves. So that's important. And that's where ACE comes in, you know, adverse childhood experiences that people can recover and recognize they need help. You know, the Bible is full of helping one another. And if people can just treat people how they would like to be treated, 
you know, that's a good start, but we got to encourage one another. We got to, uh, you know, weep with others that weep. Yeah. You know, yes. rejoice with others that rejoice, but people don't want to rejoice with someone else rejoicing or they don't want to come alongside and empathize and weep mm -hmm. because someone else is going through. Right. And that leads me to the next point about healers. You know, uh, we got scab pickers, but we also have healers that acknowledges uh, a person's wounds and help them to heal from the inside out. That is important. Um, you know, if a person is bed bound, you know, eventually they're going to develop bed sores. We know that, you know, right. that's a wound that could ulcerate and eat down to uh, the, the deep part of a person's flesh. You know, uh, a band aid won't help. Right. Right. Or uh, a, a bed wound. No, no. Uh, they're on the top. You know, the wound is there. But in order to heal properly, you know, if they don't, a nurse don't come in and help them to heal properly or move them or shift them pull around them yeah. right or yeah. pull them over you know and it takes time it takes meticulous care you know to help that person heal and that's what a healer does okay. they're very meticulous they're, they're very uh empathizing you know and helping that person to get through from the inside out they're conversating with the person they're talking to them uh, how can I help you? How, how are you doing today? They are checking on them. They're helping them to go through based on the trauma, based on the grief. Uh, I talked with someone the other day for a couple of hours just to help them to go through. Mm -hmm. They lost their sister and they lost their, their son in okay. four months span. Oh, my God. Not your sister. And your, oh, my gosh. That's too much. That's too much. No. Uh, so I had to help this person to process grief. Right. And the person thought it was their fault because of something they said to their son a couple of years ago. I said, no, it's not your fault. I mean, and it's so people are just sometimes take it on themselves because they don't understand the process and they're taking it upon themselves. So people need people. And that's why we need to come alongside one another to help a person get to a better place. Wow. Great. Be because a healer, Naida, is a person that is compassionate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and a person, I think it's nothing wrong with validating someone feeling. Yes. Not yeah. telling them to rush through it and get over it and get going. No, get or up out of there. Feel going. like that. Right. No. That's part of that uh, stages of grief. We mm -hmm. all must go through that. Mm -hmm. So in order, we got to help a person get through that, you know, validate what you're going through is normal. Now, even with the, uh, the stages of grief, the last one is acceptance, right? right. Uh, once you get to that point, your acceptance, you're exploring options, and you have a new plan in place, and you're moving on to the grief. That people can so, and yes. recognize they mm -hmm. um can you hear me? I can. I was yes. getting feedback on this Normal. computer. It's um, fine. I'll yeah. keep going. So yeah. uh, and it's important for uh, someone to again to help that person heal from the inside out. Uh healers want you to experience peace and wholeness. So I think we need to stay close when a person is grieving. And going through, that person needs to stay close to a healer. Okay, I have it. Because if they don't, if they do not, you just never know what path they're going to take. Because like what you said, how you started off, we're living in a time where people are suffering a significant loss. They're hurting. They're going through. They're grieving. And there's so many things people grieve about. So... Uh, these are the things that I have shared up to this point that will help a family or a family member to move forward. Okay. Very yes. Good. Thank oh, you. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, Thank you. Uh, yes. Yes. So, so you, mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I, I like what you put up. You know, healers want to, 
you to experience peace. I mean, peace resides still in the midst of chaos and confusion. I mean, I think that person needs to experience that and it takes another person or a group of people to help them to get to that place. We have been wired to go through that those stages. Mm -hmm. And that's why when a person is pushed through it, uh, they're not gonna end up at that place of acceptance. Mm -hmm. They're right. gonna stay in those other parts of the stages and denial and anger and depression because we have to help one another experience peace and wholeness because right. that's God's plan for sure. Right. And you know, you talk a lot about people need people and we have to go yes. with this, yes. help on one another alongside yes. with each other. But I know that a lot of times when going through things, people want to isolate and be alone. And it's during those times that you can start having crazy thoughts and you can have make, you know, when I say crazy thoughts, I don't, let me rephrase that, but let's say irrational thoughts and, um, you right. know, and then depression can set in all the more, you yes. know, and then um, picking up bad habits and, um, you know, the trying to find peace and comfort when the bottom line is sometimes you just need other people. Yes. And it doesn't mean you have to have a whole bunch of people around you, but just having someone to talk to or someone to, like you said, help sort it out. Yes. Help you yes. understand. I know when I was a classroom teacher, um, I had a middle school young lady, uh -huh. sweetheart, sweet right. guy, and all of a sudden she just started going downhill and, um, she was just having bad days and crying yes. spells and she wow. was sitting in other classes crying yes. and then yes. instructors called and said, you know, uh -huh. oh, gee, can you come and check on, you know, this student? Right. And finally, I sat her down and talked uh -huh. to her and tried to figure out what was going on. Right. And it turns out that it was the anniversary of her uncle's death. Mm. Mm. But what mm. the thing was mm. is that he went to the store Right. The corner store got into an argument, a fight, and he was shot and killed. Oh, my goodness. But he had oh. gone, while he was at the store, he was going to bring her back some ice cream. Right. Oh my so as a, when you're in the sixth grade and your favorite <sighs> uncle gets killed at a store because he was bringing you back some ice cream, it's your fault. <laughs> there you go. No, that's right. <coughs> you you think automatically think that. Yeah, it's your fault. So yes. she had been carrying that for a whole year, thinking all along it was her fault. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's tough for anybody to carry, but especially someone that young. Very tough. So yes. like you said. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without having someone there to help her sort it out right. and understand that that was not your fault, you yes. carry it. So we need yes. each other. We need yes. to talk to one another. Yeah, even if we just sitting with somebody and just listening, just being there, not necessarily pushing them to a place of what we may think, because when a person goes through change, they're dealing with circuits, patterns and habits. And there's some things that were wired, like you said, when she thought it was her fault in her uh, brain uh, and then you know, when change that that was a change, that little experience literally impacted her life for a while. But as healers come alongside, sometimes you just got to say, I'm going to just want to sit here with you. Let me just listen. I don't want you here with them. You know, I, it's, just let me sit here. I'm not going to push you to do anything you don't want to do. But <laughs> let me. <laughs> no, raise my hand. That's okay. A, raise my hand. Here's the other thing. Okay. Rachel. <laughs> if a person wants to be a healer, come on. Stop trying to come up with an explanation. Some things just are yes. beyond explaining. And and I I'm gonna step, step on some more sacred cows. <laughs> do that, do that. To say, oh well, God needed another angel in heaven. That's why he took oh, your four-year-old. You're gonna now make me know. take off my earpiece. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Oh, God needed another flower in the garden. If you all go, <laughs> cut 
about that foolishness. That is foolishness. I've heard it said, that that Naida. It's like, you got to be crazy. People. That ain't God. If you I don't mean, know what to say, don't say anything. Just be there. Thank you. Thank you. That's Just correct. Be there. I'm sorry. I know you're hurting. Well, you know. It's like, no, I don't know. Shut up. That's right. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Shut up. <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> no, no, that doesn't make the person feel. It makes the person feel worse that are better. Yes, you don't say that, Jeff. Oh, you're right. Got, got to no flower, so he took my eight year old. What? Oh my god! That does that even make sense in your mind when you play it back? Right. <laughs> Did that even make sense? Right. Right. So yes, oh, Lord, I'm, be a I'm healer. Just listen. Just be a healer. That's right. Yeah. Listen. Just listen. And uh, use wisdom in what you say, and yeah. and I, you know, and people just don't do that. Uh, yeah. I think if we ask, we got the wisdom, we can express it, and you'll get the results when you just sit there and listen. <coughs> you know, you you can listen and see, okay, this is what I need to say. This is I need to be quiet because I don't need to say this. Uh, just people, I think they either they're they're trying to help, but they're just not sensitive. To no, the I person. Think they want, they're not trying to help. I think they are. They they're want trying. To they're not trying. They want to help. They want they, to help. They want to help. They, they do. But they do don't they really? have to try. <laughs> they want help and they, do they don't know what to say. So then they just <laughs> open their mouth and all kind of nonsense will come out. Well, I'll just be there asking, do you need they, something? They to want to help. Yeah. They want to help. What can You're I right. do? Okay. I'm just going to sit over here and be quiet, you know. Right. If you need to vent, then vent. If you need right. to scream, then scream. Yes. If you need to, you know, okay. somebody come on, I got your back. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. So you need a ride. Yeah. So, I give you a ride. Um, you know, um, yeah, sometimes, that's... you know, especially, you know, especially when you're talking about the death of someone. Oh, my goodness. So many arrangements that need to be made and business mm. that needs to be handled. You know, just being there for the person. Look, can I go pick up your dry cleaning? Can I go? Right. right. You know, and you know, as African Americans, you know, we quick to bring some food. So <laughs> bring some more food. Do some sort <laughs> out the food that's there. You right. know, right. send the place with the people because it's way too much food here now. You know, it's amazing, ain't it? That's there's right. So much there's so much that can be done other than coming up with some crazy explanations. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people get that. No, uh, you know, Angel came down and did that. No, I mean, I hope we got to stop that. I mean, we do need to stop that. Um, saying insensitive things, bottom line. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's perpetuated. You know, they heard somebody else say it. So, OK, let me just say it to them. Or maybe it was said to them. I don't know. But you're right. I get really I go to a funeral and I hear that. I want to like, oh, really? Really? You got to be kidding. No, no, no. Okay. I forgot to turn my camera back on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, my microphone back on. Microphone, yeah. All right. Well, very good. So is that part about not having the skills? <laughs> yes. Yes. That's part. Of, that's under that. Uh, Category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very yeah. good. So yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, I mean, I made jokes about it and everything, but I do hope that we made it clear that, you know, when we understand that people want to say something that's comforting and soothing sure. and want sure. to provide an explanation. But if God didn't tell you. Right. <laughs> if he didn't burn that bush and tell you that this is why it happened. Right. Then you Be know, quiet. Mm. you know, just zip it, zip it, zip it, zip it. Right. You just as confused as the person who's going through it. Right. So the only thing we can say is, you know, I hurt with you. You know, I'm right. so sorry. And right. um, what can I do? You know. Yeah. You need to talk. I'm here. Call yes. me time of the day or night. Yes. Yes. Even if all you want to do is cry, I'm here. I'll listen to you cry. Right. You know, whatever it is. So. Right. So we appreciate that. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, 
<clears throat> I do want to give a shout out. I don't have my slide in front of me right now, but I do definitely want to give a shout out to our sponsor this week. Okay. Our sponsor this week is Drea Faces Beauty. And she um, she is a, a phenomenal makeup artist. And I will I will put her, I think I created one I did. Um, and she is a phenomenal makeup artist. She does not try to create a new face for you, okay? She just enhances and, and, high, and highlights your natural beauty. So Drea Faces Beauty, and she can be reached at www.dreafacesbeauty.com. And she is our sponsor for this evening. So we are appreciative that we are finally we're getting sponsors. So that's a good thing. We're excited about that. Yes. So um, Dr. Javard, I always ask, and I should have a slide here that already has my, that information, although I don't see it right now. So I always ask how, if someone wants to reach you, how yes. do they reach you? Hope Center, www.hopecenteropi.org. Okay. www.hopecenteropi.org. Yep. That's the website. Mm -hmm. uh, I will give you the phone number. I'm ready. 904-214. Six seven three nine. Okay, very good. <clears throat> and there we are www.hopecenteropi.org. Correct. All right, very good. So, do you have any closing words or final remarks? You notice I did not tell you at 30 minutes that we were running out of time. I just let this one run. I know that good information. <laughs> we had to get it out. So yes, yes. sorry, everyone, that we took longer than 30 minutes, but this was some good information that we had yes. to get out. Yes. yes. Do you have any final comments? Sure, sure, for sure. <laughs> well, again, thank you, uh, Dr. Naita, for having me on Educational Moments, and uh, I have enjoyed it. And I wanted to share uh, final comments to anyone that is listening, which I know there are a lot of people listening and those that will listen in the future, listen. that if you're grieving, there's always help. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're grieving over, uh, it's important to be around certain people that are healers and not scab pickers. Wow. You must know there is help and there's hope that somebody will come alongside of you and help you through this process. Excellent. I love it. Well, Dr. Javardo Jones. <laughs> yes. Thank you once again. Woo -hoo! I'm Woo -hoo! Giving you a picture, but I can't tonight. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you so much yes, as thanks. always for sharing everything. Yes. We love you. We appreciate yes. you. And Same we here. will see you very soon. Thank you so much. Yes, you will. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Mm -hmm.